Greetings adventure travelers and fellow keepers of the lake. This video is a suggestion from one of the keepers of the lake and it is about creating your character by looking at the little miniature and just like looking at all the details and everything and basing your character around that. Yeah, I was thinking for the last week how I could maybe make a twist on this and how I can make it interesting because if you just like take a little miniature and just look at it and create the character, it's basically a pregen, right? So how do you make this interesting in a game where everything is so like customizable in crown and skull there is a concept of like getting some restrictions like creating a zero point characters or for example you have some pregens like the templates i talked about but if you want to like create a whole new system and maybe have like a, a restrictive growth path type of thing something that you would see in mmos and like rpgs on the computer for example then i think miniatures can be used to to actually like emphasize this make this interesting so let's roll the intro and jump straight into the matter So after the session we had on Sunday and we were playing uh, Pulp Cthulhu, the two-headed serpent campaign, I asked my players like let's brainstorm how we would make this interesting and we came up with the idea that if you take a miniature and you look at it, it has some of the like fixed attributes around it. So for example this miniature, and I will zoom in in, in a while, but this particular uh, miniature has a staff, she has some like Daedric uh, evil armor type of thing made of like spider web or something. And yeah, you would kind of use the system, the point by system to model that character. But you can go further by saying that she has a certain slot. You know how in, for example, computer games, when you're playing an RPG, you have like a fixed type of weapon that you can use with your character. Like if you have... Uh, chosen a rogue class, you can only wield daggers and then when the monster drops like uh, a greatsword, you cannot use it because you're not statted out for that. Well, it's the same thing, like you're using the restrictions of your miniatures to see what you can equip. And I've thought about this a lot, like uh, can we use Legos and just like put the, the certain weapons uh, onto the Lego and make it modular, but then you have to collect a bunch of Legos, so that's not working. Uh, I've think, thought about like coloring the miniature, like give it to the player and they maybe change the color of the hair or something, but yeah, that's like basic customization with that you can do with any miniature, so um, it's still not it. But if you take the limitations of the computer games and you look at like the next thing that's probably the most... Um, how would I put it, uh, common in, in video games, is the skill trees. So let's imagine you having a skill tree where actually your tree is made out of miniatures. So let's look at the, the hand cam and I will show you exactly what I'm thinking about. This is the setup and I imagine your game starting with you having as a DM having like a setup similar to this on the table and each of the player characters and I will show you this is just one tree I imagine you having like two or three different trees like this side by side and you they you would have them sitting up I'm just laying them down so you can see it from the camera but let's say that you have a couple of these trees on the table on the side as a prop and your players are starting with one of the three paths and one would be something like this, one would be, for example, a, a major, something like that. And you would have another one, which is like, I don't know, uh, you can figure it out. And then uh, you say, okay, I'm starting as a regular guy and this would be, I don't know, uh, let's say 10 to 15 point character that you're starting with. And then as you progress, let's say when you get uh, 10 more points or 15 more points, you progress up the, the tree. So then your player that progressed can pick one of these uh, minis. Now I know the problem that could arise is where you have multiple players picking the same path and then they want to pick the same miniature. Well, the first one that comes to the, the 25 point mark or something like that would be the first one to choose. When you're this guy, you cannot have like any, any 
weapons maybe you have a bat or something like that some garbage improvised weapons that would be easy to break maybe have some priority when you're applying attrition or something like that homebrew it be be creative with that but then you see the gear that these miniatures have for example this is a bowman of a sorts so you say oh i really want to use the bow so next time i get 10 points i will upgrade to this miniature and now you have everything you can have a cloak you have everything that this miniature can have. You have a cloak, you have the bow, uh, you have the hood. And it's it's like a visible upgrade that you got. Now, if you want to go to, to the swordsman path, well, you get this pirate outfit. You have the shoulder plates, you have the hat. So that's something to think about when thinking about attrition. Then you can progress to towards the tank and then towards the paladin. Uh, also, you can go to like a two-handed rogue type uh, class. And then you get like a, a beast of a man. Uh, you can grow these trees as much as you want. Like the, the archer becomes an elven like mega archer and then gets a great sword. Why not? Why not? Uh, crown and skull system allows you to do things like that. So you can wield the bow and wield the, the great sword as well. Why I think this is uh, an amazing way to do this type of thing is because you actually have this on the table for every session. So the players can visually see that they're, the players can visually see their progression and they are looking at this miniature, they are striving to get it for, I don't know, 10 sessions and then when they finally get it, they, they feel like they are getting a gift. And I encourage gifting this to the players so they can feel like they've earned something by not dying and, and playing the game. This is just one of the paths. Uh, I will show you another one in a minute. So the the thing that my uh, fellow keeper of the lake pointed out is on the page 326. I'll put it on the screen somewhere as well. So let's now look at uh, a caster type of character and I would prefer to have all of them in like the same uh, depth of the tree so you wouldn't have like maybe the fighter have like 10 progression levels and the caster for example having just five and make them all the same depth so that players feel that they're having a fair progression all of them and when you have the same starting character I think like because they all converge to one point the starting point I think it's best that you encourage that they get like a bunch of different characters so you have the full cast you would have the someone that's striving to be a tank someone that's striving to be a fighter like model these trees so that it is kind of fair and that everyone fills a niche and don't make them too big because yeah uh, then you will have a prop of like 200 miniatures on the table i mean if you have the space and you have the miniatures absolutely do it it would be epic to have like a backdrop of miniatures behind you and it would be epic like imagine being a player and getting into that room and just like seeing the whole wall of miniatures and you know that one day you will climb to the top of the hierarchy i think that's that's pretty dope now let's have a look at the second tree if you only knew how this all looks you would be surprised how i even make these like it is it is chaos but at least I got the blue lights, like the Barlow Keep is growing and is becoming more beautiful by the day. And also I've ordered three more books because I have a problem with shopping. So when they arrive, uh, be on the lookout for the video talking about them, like maybe some mail uh, unpacking, like what's in the mail. That's that's a YouTube video idea, right? So <laughs> I'll do that with this horrible top down camera type of setup. And yeah, maybe I talk about mechanics of those games as well. So. Subscribe, stay tuned. Yeah, YouTuber stuff. Now I have over 100 subscribers, so I'm legit. Yeah, let's let's look at the, the the tree. Okay, so here let's start with like you're you're just a maid. You're starting with like regular maid, hitting people with like pans and buckets or whatever. You go and like get educated, and now you're a bookworm. Ah, come on, focus, focus. Yeah, that's right, focus. Uh, now you're a bookworm, you're getting into like books and you uncover like some arcane arts. So now you have the ability to choose, am I going to the, the dark arts path or to the like more traditional arcane type of path? Maybe you get corrupted by books. This is like also a, a role playing opportunity and I would encourage players to actually role play this stuff and explain how they jumped from this level to this level. And also like here you can go to uh, like a butcher type of 
lady and then to assassin and maybe then to a fighter uh, with two katana swords yeah if you don't see it also these miniatures are from the mage knight game you can see it um here i have the ultimate edition and yeah it's a funny story i actually started playing dnd because i was not satisfied uh with the amount of choice you have in this particular game and you can even take it further and start as a child if you have these child miniatures why not these are from the betrayal house on the hill i think you can even like uh, have some let me see where the miniature is here it is you can maybe have this one in the one part of the progression like if you get to this miniature on like some i don't know 100 points uh progression then your player has to think of like how they ended up in the dragon form if they are not the dragonborn already or you as a dm like ask your players what their favorite path is and then either make them commit to it or you can like create just a loose storyline of how they would end up in that form have something like maybe an item that they can uncover that turns them into a dragon or something like that or in our campaign we actually had a situation where uh, one of the characters died and the only way to resurrect him was to move him into a dragon's body and then some like transformations happened and you know classic rpg stuff he ended up a dragon so this is him without armor and you see the skin colored parts are still like human skin and this is the armored um, part you can see that one horn sticking out uh, pretty cool yeah this is the idea i don't know if there is anything else to say about this um you can certainly like even go uh further than this and say that for example your player is using a loot and then is a bard or like transition to like a, a more cosplay larp type of thing where the things that you bring to the room even if they are props are the things that give you some abilities so that would encourage players to dress up in in our group we don't do that not everyone is a fan of that but there are groups that dress up and if you need an excuse to dress up yeah that's that's totally fine like just say that it's a mechanic i've actually bought this just because my first character was a bard you said you're into music and you're playing a bard yeah i'm that type of guy <laughs> don't judge but yeah i bought this hundred year old um loot in hungary when i was on a trip there and it's epic it sounds like crap but it's epic. And I know I could have like taken a miniature and like go through the book and look at the stats and then like create the, the character. That's not the point. That's not the point of this video. Uh, I'm not going to like make a tutorial on how to read a book. I have a tutorial on how to read a book. That's the player guide. But if you follow the player guide and you have the book and you have the miniature, I'm sure you're smart enough to figure it out on your own. And that would be it. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, be sure to subscribe. Now we are growing fast. Why not grow even fast? let's share the the knowledge let's share the love for the rpgs let's share the love for the community that makes this hobby amazing and as always keep on going keep on loving keep on being creative play more dnd and i will see you in the next one farewell keepers